hugging each other. No, don't hide! We're spreading happiness! Before the gateway to Britain faced the biggest challenge in its 74-year history, our cameras were there. We've got a male becoming disruptive. He can't be drunk at this time in the morning, surely? You're coming here to study, OK, and you have nowhere to stay. What? The aircraft come in and out like fiddler's elbows. So buckle up. You'd be seasick with that, wouldn't you? As Heathrow's army battled to take on whatever is thrown at them. We're not in America or Canada, this is the United Kingdom, OK? Then we've got a bit of a scrap going on. What is that? Do you really want to know? This is Heathrow. When it was business as usual. There you go. At Britain's busiest airport. But it makes interesting watching. Spectacular, really. Somewhere the sun is shining. So, honey, don't you cry. It's the third Monday in January, officially the most depressing day of the year. The clouds will soon roll by. Otherwise known as Blue Monday. That's your good side, she said. <laughs> Beautiful, great. Have a lovely journey. Bye bye. And at 6 a.m. in Terminal 4, one blue airline, KLM, is commemorating the occasion with a special event, led by customer experience manager Sarah. No, don't hide! We're spreading <laughs> happiness! Have a lovely flight! Oh, Where are you travelling to? Where are you going uh, to? Oh, wow, fantastic. We're going to get some sunshine. Some oh. <laughs> Bring some back for us. All right. We're trying to mood boost all of our customers on what is supposed to be the most depressing day of the year. And as you can see here today, our customers, they're already in a great mood. Are you happy? I'm always happy. I'm always happy. <laughs> but in case her passengers aren't quite as bubbly as herself first thing, she's brought along some quality freebies. Usual little postcards here, so with little inspirational yeah. quotes. Time to sparkle and shine. Lovely. <laughs> it's bad manners to keep a vacation waiting. I could have given that to the ladies going to the Dominican. KLM are the flag carrier for the Netherlands, considered the world's fifth happiest country. So Sarah and the station manager, Martin, have quite a reputation to uphold. Are you, are you feeling happy today? Very happy today. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> happy Monday. <laughs> Time to sparkle and shine. We have these like little bluey things, a little sticker. If you want to take a photograph with our selfie frame. With passengers checking in for the first flights of the day, Sarah may have just found the perfect addition to her Blue Monday event. Apparently, we have a gospel singer who's going uh, back to Africa, and uh, his family member has said that she'll get him to give us a song. How good would that be for their spreading happiness on Blue Monday? How's your singing, Sarah? I think I'm quite good, but I don't know. People always say, no, it's fine if I offer to give them a tune. I just don't understand. <laughs> I understand that you're a man with golden pipes. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Would you sing for us today? Shall we do a, what is it, with three people? What do you call that? Yeah, I do, yeah. No, what do you a call it? A duet is two people. A duet I don't know two. What's, what's three? A trio? a trio? Shall we do a trio? You raised me up so I can stand on Monday. Then I am still and waiting in the silence Until you come and sit a while with me <laughs> Oh God, I don't know what happened. Yeah. This it just overtakes me and I went off key as well, I think, for the majority of it, but do you know, <laughs> life's for living, isn't it? <laughs> I'm getting emotional. <laughs> You've really spread some happiness with that beautiful song, so we'd like to offer you an upgrade. We'd like to upgrade you into our business class, as I'm sure you're spreading love all over. <laughs> Thanks welcome. so much. Thank you. Having been raised up, Sarah spots a passenger who may need some elevation assistance with his own luggage. Somebody likes TV. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> 
Wow. They're not going to go in the overhead locker. You know that, don't you? Yeah. They're just chilling in there. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. can't yeah. explain it because obviously anything over 158 centimetres, it's got the Yeah, oversized this charge. is the thing. So you'd not notified us in advance that you're taking these. No. no. OK. These passengers have splashed their cash in the sails and were hoping to get their gadgets back to Ghana, but they forgot to notify the airline of their bulky baggage. We only have limited space, obviously, in the aircraft hold as well, and, of course, we want to make sure that we can take care of them. They, they incur an oversized charge, so it would be 600 euros to take both of these. Oh, that could be a donor. Um, by all means, we can take it for you, you know. But I don't want us to take your money, and it costs you more than it would to buy a TV in Ghana. It doesn't yeah. make sense, does it? Yeah. So... Oh. I'm going to leave you to think oh, about yeah, it. I'll leave you to it. deliberate. Yeah, yeah. If the customers are travelling with something like that, they really do need to let us know in advance so that we can inform them as well as what the requirements and the additional charges are. So I'm going to pay like six, seven hundred or seven hundred euros. That's a lot. I can buy another one easy, but because I've already bought it, that means it's a lot. So will it be deal or no deal for the two tellies? There's no doubt grey, wet weather does nothing for one's mood. In fact, it's scientifically proven that sunshine raises our serotonin levels. Which is why this year, over five million of us are jetting off in search of winter sun. If you're travelling from Terminal 2, you'll have plenty of sunny destinations to choose from, as well as another phenomenon to lift your mood. You right there? What are you looking for? A Chian? Yes. It's Elena. Oh, no. <laughs> Passenger experience manager, Demi. Where are you off to today? Houston, yeah. Texas. You're in the wrong area. Oh, am I? Yeah, unless you want to fly to Bombay. Oh, no. Fancy <laughs> India? With his sage knowledge of the terminal and a touch of Grecian charisma, he's a face that's hard to forget. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 How are you? Look at it. This is the gala. Oh, the yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. 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 I'm so we left him when they were kids, mm. and I'm seeing him here now. I can't believe it. Over 20 years. It must be. I said it over 20 be. years. And I'm so delighted that... Put Dimitris on I'm, there. Yeah. What was Demi like when he was a boy? <laughs> <laughs> Naughty but lovely. <laughs> you know, dad, you remember your yeah, dad? Yeah, yeah. You always tell him off. My but, dad's uh, very strict with us. Very strict. Did Demi have a... Did he have a nickname? <laughs> Handsome. <laughs> Didn't you? <laughs> he was a boy. <laughs> get me all, get boy. Daniel Red now. I recognised them straight away. My mum and dad were around there, and they were around dad's nearly every day. And that's what it's like with the, the Greek Cypriot communities. Well, you, you got my number now, so... Yes, thank you, Dimitri. That's all right. Everyone's an auntie kind of thing, you know? See Take you. care. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. See you later. You made my day. <laughs> Good. <laughs> See you, darling. Take care. It's really, really nice. It's nice. But there's no more time to reminisce over an ouzo. Hey, Kafar, can you give me a cool line like this? Yep, stand by. Demi's quickly brought back to the present by a call from the airport's operations centre. He throws eyes and ears. With news of a woman stranded at arrivals. Do you like being the guy that everyone saw? turns to the problem solver? Uh, uh, it's all part, it's all part of the day's work. Hi, guys. How you doing? All right? Got a call from Control about a young lady? Yes. Hello. Hello, yes. how are you? A young lady. Yes, my nice name's Demetrius. Who are you? Okay, my name is, is Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. Nordby. I'm a British citizen. Uh huh. I want to move back. I want to come here to stay. I want to live here. But I haven't got enough money to look after myself. So I need help. Over five million Brits live abroad, with a possible surge of returnees predicted since the UK left the EU. My sister wanted me to visit her, and she's in Florida. Right, OK. But we phoned the British consulate in Miami, uh -huh. and she said that if I come here, mm -hmm. 
I will get help. Yeah. I left my son and daughter-in-law there, and I've come here. So your son and daughter-in-law in Florida? They, they okay. yes, they're sort of right. backpacking. OK, really. OK. Now, I, they told me that if I phone shelter, assistance, mm -hmm. they will help me. OK. We've got a place here yes. that look after people in your position. I'll give them a quick call. Yes. And explain to them uh, what's happened. You're a British, you've got a British passport? Yes, I'm a British passport. So I am a British they'll, look, they'll look after you. Thank you very much. No, I'm 80 fine. years old. It's just... That's all right. That's I've fine. I've been trying to get here for years. OK, that's fine. And I'm so glad to be here. Good. OK, give me a couple of minutes. In this instance, King Demi's powers on their own won't be enough to assist Elizabeth. So he's going to get help from a local team of independent social workers. During the cold winter months, while most of us struggle to get out of bed, Heathrow needs to be on its toes, ready to react to the effects of any adverse weather. Low temperatures, for example, can cause ice buildup on a plane's exterior. And if not removed, it can have a serious effect on takeoff, slowing it down and reducing lift by 30%. So today, outside on the stands, the freezing temperatures have called for extra safety precautions for every outbound flight. This plane may look like it's getting a platinum wash and wax, but in fact, it's being de-iced. Up to a thousand liters of de-icer is sprayed on each plane to make sure it's safe to fly. And to meet environmental standards, all that liquid can't simply go down the drain. All right, so we've just, I've just seen one push back just up here. We'll give this one a go. Large long-haul planes have their own de-icing pads, complete with a drainage system. But for smaller short hauls, the spraying is done on the stands. The short haul stands are quite busy because the um, aircraft come in and out like fiddlers' elbows. And mopping up the mess is godfather of the ASD. That's the Airside Safety Department, Hugh. I started in 1975, so uh, I've been around a while. If it has four wheels, then Hugh has mastered it. Roles differ from day to day. You know, one day I could be driving a coach, dust cart, and a pickup, gully sucker. I might be doing a diddly sweeper. Could be anything. Today, he's not diddly sweeping. He's testing out a brand new piece of kit. Today, I'm operating a vehicle called a Glyvac. As we're driving around, it's like pushing the old hoover around. And just like your classic carpet cleaner, Glyvac has a water tank. Only his is big enough to hold 6,800 litres. That's about 85 hot baths, and is designed to hoover up a very specific chemical, glycol. Glycol is like a fluid which is probably as thick as a washing up liquid. It's like a green, slimy colour, and that creates a bond over the fins of the aircraft and the tail fins to stop them freezing as they're taking off with the cold temperatures. Kind of like full fancy freeze. Yeah, something similar to that sort of line. Uh, the environmental people would probably know more about it than I do. I mean, be fair, I failed my 11 plus with distinction. Well, it's an absolutely fabulous pass today, Hugh. Glycol lowers the freezing point of water to around minus 50 degrees centigrade, which prevents ice building back up. The environment would seem uh, hot on our case in the event of a lot of glycol going into the water system. So we have to be very wary and the company will get heavy fines. And I've got my career to think of. While its toxicity is very low, if large quantities were left to go down rainwater drains, it would impact on the local natural environment. I think that'll do. Making the job of Hugh and his Hoover a high priority for Heathrow. At ASDT, we try and apply the platinum finish. So now's the time to decant. The reading on the uh, clock here is showing that we've got nearly 1,500 litres in it. The decanting is done to a storage tank before it gets sent off to the airport's own 20 million pound engineered wetlands, where the glycol can be broken down and the water cleaned in an environmentally friendly way. Ready for the pump. When this procedure's done, have a quick cup of tea and then we'll get back out on the field. 
With planes safely de-iced, ready for takeoff, and the glycol safely disposed of, looks like Rod and Hugh have earned their brew. It's been another triumph for the team. Success. A nice cup of tea is a quintessential part of what makes one British. Take a passport, lady, please. And a British passport is all you need to enjoy drinking it freely throughout the United Kingdom. Next, please. Outside international arrivals... These suitcases is my life. That's it. Eight-year-old Elizabeth has just landed at Terminal 2 with her British passport, wanting to start a new life in the UK. I am British. I wasn't born here, but I am British. Both my parents were British. And I did come here and work sometime. Then I went to South Africa for a year, but I met my future husband, and he was South African. The rest was history. Demi's trying to find out what options are available to her as a British citizen by using an independent social work team. Elizabeth, have you got your passport with you? Yes. Yep, so we've got the passport here. What is it you require? So it's a British passport. Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. So why, why do you want to be back in the UK now? What's made up your mind? I've wanted to come back for years. My husband died in 2001. Uh-huh. And I thought, right, that's it, I'm going. Yeah. And then my son said, no, don't. We had a house yeah. with dogs. She's always been wanting to come back. That's right. And stay, but things have like been in the way, whether it be family, whether it be pets. So, so when was you last in the UK, Elizabeth? Oh, I was here part of 60, 61, 62. So you've not been back since the 60s? I've been back to visit. Oh, you've been back to visit, have you? Yes, Who were you visiting? I came back in 1980. OK, so you came back in the 80s. We got to spend three whole days here. Uh-huh. And then in 94, I came back. And you're back in 94 with, mom. with your mum? We spent two lovely weeks here. No, so you've not been, you've not actually lived here then? No. You just came over. I haven't as, been able to stay here. Right, so she's not been able to stay. So no, she hasn't been living here. Even though she worked and lived in Britain for two years in the 60s, if you've been out of the country for over five years, you lose your case for residency. Elizabeth's passport only allows her to visit. Have you got anyone in the UK? No. What were your plans going to be then today, Elizabeth? I was going to phone these shelter assistance people. Perhaps arrangements could be made. I mean, obviously, I didn't think it was going to happen overnight. Mm. And they could find me a very small flat somewhere with a little place to wash, a little kitchenette or something. Would be wonderful. I'm not hoping for a palace. I think, I think where the, the issue is, Yes, you've got your passport and everything else, but you've not been a resident. She's never lived here, so that's the sticking point. If you don't have residency or you're not a proven asylum seeker, to settle in the UK, the options are limited. Where would be the best place for her to get more help? Where would she need to go? Elizabeth won't be able to access benefits or the NHS and will have to support herself while she seeks further advice. No, she's in a wheelchair. I've not, I've not seen her walk yet. No, no, I've not seen I her step walk. out of it. But you can walk, yeah? You're not, you don't need walking block. aids or anything no, like that. No, no, so no. you don't need a walking stick, right? No, I no don't. so she can walk fine. Mm -hmm. We're going to send her to the Kensington Town Hall, <laughs> and then they will make an assessment of her because of her age. I'm going to get you a cab, yes. mini cab, that's going to take you to Kensington Town Hall, and um, they'll take you from there. There's a housing team there. Yes. You just tell them basically you're homeless. They have to, there and then, make, do an assessment for you. You tell them exactly what you've told me, yes. and they'll do their best to help you. It's a quite a unique situation. Usually, nine times out of ten, they've got the British passport, and they used to reside here at some point, but the lady's been residing more in South Africa. Very best of luck, my darling. All right. Thank you so take much. care, sweetheart. All right. Take care. Like every homeless person, it's now down to the council to assess Elizabeth and decide whether her future is in the UK. Good luck to her. She's, she, and you know what? She's always wanted to come back, and she has. Bye. <laughs> Take care. In London, you know, it's, it's a hard place to get through if you're on your own and you've got no support. So we gave her at least a start, and I'm happy that it went, to be honest with you. I'm very happy.
and on the emotion of happiness, some people just never stop. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> In Terminal 4, customer experience manager Sarah is trying to keep spirits up on the most depressing day of the year. Are you checking these in? Yeah, this is a hand of the She's got her work cut out. This passenger is trying to get to Ghana with two 55-inch tellies and is facing a 600 euro bill for the privilege. Now, the big question is, how much is a big TV worth? <laughs> in Ghana, they're just over 4,000 Ghanaian sedi, which is around 560 pounds. This one, I have, to, I have to leave this one. So you're going to take the new one? The new one, in OK. This passenger is allowed to travel with up to 46 kilograms of baggage for free, which should help reduce his excess baggage fees. But it's still going to cost him 300 euros to take his TV with him. Ah, uh, 300 euros. <laughs> oh, don't think about it. Don't think of when you're watching Man U on the TV, it'll be worth it. It's cheaper than a season ticket. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you. Thanks for your help. Thank you. Have a great journey. Thanks very much for your understanding. As long as the customers are walking away with a smile, then we know we've done a good job. With the 55-inch telly and its owner safely on their way to Ghana, Sarah has one more shot at making Blue Monday a little less depressing. Oh, what's in there? A guitar? Or... Yeah, that's a guitar. Is it? Oh, wow. It must be precious. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you good? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Big problem for today is the wind. Oh, he's going to go around. Is he going to go around? At the moment, we've got a fire alarm activation in Sony. Where's the fire? What are we going to evacuate first? 